We're going to be building out the search query in this video and this is going to be something on our server. So I have the modules open and in listings I want to create a new folder which I call search. And then we're going to start by setting up the schema for it. And for this one I'm going to call it, uh, well it's going to be under the query type and I'm going to call it search listings. So this is going to take some number of parameters and it's going to return an array of listing. And now I want to pass in an input type here that's going to be uh, all the possible ways I can search. So I'm going to call this search listings input and I'm just going to call this guess which is going to have an integer there. So I'm going to leave it basic for now and then we're going to add on to it. So for example what if I wanted to uh, this is going to be set up to search and find the number of guests so that us see the listings that have three guests for example. So let's go ahead and create the resolver for that and I'm just going to copy what we have in find and go ahead and we can remove the whole listing here and we just need the query type and it's going to be uh, search listings. We don't need the context at all. Here we have something called input and we can get rid of all that there. So in inside input we have something called guess. And so I want to find all the listings with that number of guess. I can do this by saying listing.find and pass in where and here I can say guess. And now I uh, have pretty much completed this resolver. I can test it out now and I'm just going to get the new data and we're going to say query search listings and we can pass in guess. So I want to see how many guess or how many listings have guess of two. And here I kind of want to grab all the data. So let's just grab all of the stuff that we used over here. Um, I notice we're also not doing guess. So let's go ahead and see what the guess are. So here are all the listings over here that have a guess of two. That's well and good, but this is a pretty basic search. I want to add some more stuff to it. So let's now say we also want to grab uh, the beds. So we're going to add, that's going to be an integer type. And now my resolver over here, I can handle the beds as well and add that to the where clause. And so now if I come back over here, refresh it, and I say beds one, I can see where the guess is equal to two and the beds are equal to one. So if we search that, uh, we can see uh, quite a few less have those two parameters. Um, and this works great, but the one problem is now, let's say I get rid of guess and I just want to go back to see how many um, listings have a single bed. Uh, we, it doesn't return any values. Now the reason for this is um, obvious if we were to console this. So if we console.log with the value of guess and what the value of beds are, and we were to run this query again, uh, you'll notice uh, what the value of guess is. So we'll run this again, and you see it's undefined. So we're passing undefined into our where clause. So what's happening is it's actually trying to find uh, all the places where listing is null uh, for guess, which in this case is not what we really want. So we can change this by calling, we're going to call this, say, um, create an object up here called where. And I'm just going to set this to anything. And where is what we pass here. So now I'm going to say if guess, we can say where dot guess is equal to guess. And if beds, we can say where dot beds is equal to beds. So now we're checking the case um, if these are undefined. And now I can come back over here and I can query this and now I'll see the beds, all that have one. Uh, but now you can see we're in all kinds of stuff with guess. And same thing works with guess. Um, a search works like that. And so that's kind of the approach that we want. Um, but this breaks down a little bit whenever we want to add uh, some more advanced things. So for example, one thing we want is maybe to query by the name. So we can see the names here. Um, and I don't think there's a way to query, at least the way we want to query the names, where um, if we come over here, what I want to be able to do, is so take the name, which is going to be a string, and we're going to say name, 
And we can do it in the same manner, right? If name where dot name is equal to name. So this would work if I search the whole name. So like for this example, and let's refresh. Um, it's going to find this house, but let's say, for example, I wanted to find a substring. So I want to find all the ones that start with SK. Um, we can't get any results back with this, this method. So what we're going to have to use is a uh, operator called I like, and I'm not sure if we can do it using um, this particular format. But typeorm allows us to create queries in another way. Um, and they have this thing called a query builder that we can use. So I'm going to copy this, and we can get this code working the way we want to. So for this, I'm going to call this, um, this is going to be the listing uh, query builder. And I'm going to have to get the connection, so get connection. And then we're going to have to specify uh, what we're searching for, in this case a listing. Here you want to specify a uh, an alias, so you can call this whatever you like. I'm going to use the alias L here. Um, and then here we can attach any type of where's that we want. And at the very end, uh, we want to call get get one, or in this case, we want to get many. So get many. Now I'm not going to await this right away, and I'm going to get rid of this. So this allows me to um, create a. I guess we we never yeah. So it's just mad because we haven't reassigned it yet. So the reason why I'm setting this up is now I can conditionally add where clauses. So if there's guess, I can say listing query builder um, dot and where. And now I can specify my query. So l dot guess is equal to uh, guess. And then we just pass in our parameter. So now this will get plugged in here, um, and we can do this for each one. Now, you'll note this is a little bit more verbose, so it's a little bit more annoying that way. But at the very bottom, we can say listing query dot get many. So now we're conditionally adding these and where's, and I just have to reassign it also. So there we go. Um, but what this allows us to do, and let's actually make sure this works correctly. There we go. Um, is now we can use different uh, SQL operators. We're not limited to what we are, were doing before. So now I can say um, beds, or I guess not beds, sorry, name. And we're going to use the I like uh, operator. And here we're going to pass in a string. And I'm going to put two percent signs. And then we're going to pass in um, name. So what this does is it says anything can be over here and anything can be over here. Um, so we're going to just search for all the things where a uh, name is in the middle. Um, so this is, uh, you'll see how this works when we do a search like this, it'll make more sense. So now when I do a search like this, oh and it looks like I messed up the syntax. Okay so it doesn't like that I added the... Uh, little single quotes here and then put the percents like that. So we can do this same thing in a slightly different manner. So I'm going to have my variable there. Um, but now I'm going to say name and I'm just going to change what I'm inserting in. So now name here, I'm going to add the percent signs around. Alright, so give that a save and let's try this query again. Um, go ahead and run that. And now we get a much better uh, result. It looks like it's working. So let me explain what we're what this name thing is doing now. So first off, we're using an operator called I like. This is also known as a like, but we had an I in front. And what the I does is it makes it case insensitive. So for example, look at this Skivvy thing. So if I have SK lowercase, um, it's going to still find it. But if I were to get rid of this, we can just use the like operator if you want. So you can use either one if you want to. Um, and now we're getting no results. Looks like they're all capital. So if I do a capital S there, um, we can see pulling up the ones that have that. So I like to use I like because it catches more stuff. And then the stuff on the sides, what that means is um, it catches things. So like if I have IV right here, so let's search for IV. It's going to pull that 
query up, or it's going to pull this up right here. And what's going to happen is we have IV, and then we have a percent on the left side, which matches to SK, and a percent on the right side, which matches to EE. And it takes as many parameters as you need. And it can also take any uh, characters or take none, no characters at all. So, for example, this will still match because um, it's an exact match. And so in this case, the name will match completely. And you can see also if you open up your editor, you can see what this looks like. So here's Skivvy, here's the IV, and you can see these percent signs basically just match any characters to the left and right. And by the way, if you didn't want to, you can just match to the left or just match to the right if you want to. Um, that's an option. So in this case, um, I'm only matching to the right. So for example, if I just do SK, it still comes up. Um, but if I were to do Kivi, it's not going to find it because I'm not matching to the left. Um, so that's why I put both percent signs there. They'll give us the most results back. Um, I don't know, and you can just do a single letter to see all the ones that have a single letter in them. Um, and then you can do more queries. So Gab, and then you can match that to see how many guests. So let's do it that has a beds of three. And now you can start getting more advanced queries this way. So I think this is as advanced as I want to get this sort of thing. You can add pretty much as many operators as you want here now, and you kind of get the gist of how that'll work. So you can just add another in your schema, and then you can add more ands or wheres or however want you want to add to this query builder. Um, the next thing I want to do real quickly is to add um, a pagination. So to do this, I'm going to add two parameters on this. So I'm going to get an offset, which is going to be an integer, and it's going to be required, and a limit, and it's going to be an integer too. Um, and so let's take those as parameters here. So limit and offset. And actually this is something you don't even need to uh, implement yourself. Listing key B, QB I mean, and we're just going to say add those on. And I guess I could do it right here before I do get many. So dot, uh, there, there is a limit and a offset, as you see there, but uh, they per tell you in the documentation to use take, and uh, uh, I, I forget what the other, the other thing is uh, besides take. I think it's um, take is sets the maximum number of entities to take, so that's what limit is going to be equal to. And then the other thing is offset, so that's how much to the left or the right. Um, and they recommend using skip for that instead of offset. But it's the exact same thing. Um, so we could rename this to limit, we could rename this to offset, and I think we'd get the same results. But I think they, uh, in the doc somewhere, I remember reading that uh, they prefer using this. I think it's more robust for some reason, so there must be a slight implementation detail under the hood of how they're doing it. But anyway, what this will allow us to do now is I'm going to make my query more generic now. So beds of one. Um, no, let's make it two. So um, it's required. Oh, we didn't provide that. So I'm going to refresh because it's not letting me refresh here. So let's go ahead and provide the offset, which I'm going to say is zero, and the limit. And the limit is going to give us back how much we want. So I'm going to say a limit of 10. So what this is going to do is give us 10 items back if there's that many items. So I don't think we have 10 items that have beds of 2, at least what I was seeing. So I'm just going to say uh, limit of 3. So now it's only going to return me 3 results here. Um, or it looks like 3, 1, 2, yep, 3 results. So these 3 results here it gave me back. And now notice I have um, Vipe. So now I can increase the offset. So if I did an increase offset of one, Skivvy is now not going to be the first one anymore, um, but instead Scalith will be. And we get that back, and now we have a new item at the end here. So what we would do is this allows us to get a whole page. So this will be a page of three, and then to get the next page we say offset of three, and that will give us a whole new page of items, and then we grab six, and now we notice, I guess we still have more items left, and we can do nine, and we can just page through like that. So that's how we're going to do pagination on the front end. That's how we implement it on the back end. Now, before I've done pagination in a couple different ways, um, I like doing limit and offset with search like this because 
Um, the, the, the disadvantage of using women offset is if you have a very big table size or a very big query, then it starts to slow down in performance. But since we're using a search query here, we tend to narrow down the number of items that we're looking at. Um, and so I prefer using women offset with this because it simplifies and it allows you to add sorting without messing up anything. So you have a much smaller set of items you're looking at, so limit and offset I like to use in this case, and that's what we're going to use for this. So that's it for this video, guys. In the next one, we'll actually start implementing this query to use on the front end.